All right, Kel, and this is Seth. Good to see you again. Thanks everybody for joining us. Congratulations to you, Kellen. Um, and we'll we'll get started here with some questions uh, on the Zoom. But Kellen, first, if you just wanted to kind of give uh, the group here your your just initial uh, thoughts of uh, of kind of your whirlwind uh, weekend, and then now here you are in, in in New York for for a huge announcement. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a huge weekend for me. Uh, you know, coming off of a MLS Cup win, um, it's been uh, it's been a long ten years coming. I'm glad to finally achieve that with a, a great group of guys. And um, yeah, I mean, it's went from um, coming off a higher roller coaster of a game to celebrating with the team to now being here in New York, uh, finding out I've made the 2022 uh, World Cup roster. And so it's been a it's been a whirlwind of a week, but it's been an exciting week. I'm, I'm super grateful for for the opportunity and can't wait to represent uh, to the U.S. In, in the biggest tournament at the biggest stage in the world. All right, thank you. We'll start off with some questions, please. If everyone has a, has a question, if you could use the raise your hand function uh, on the Zoom, that would be great. Um, and let's go, we'll start with uh, Kevin Baxter. Go ahead, Kevin. Thanks, Seth. Hey, Kelly, congratulations. A couple of questions quickly. Um, the last five days, you won your first MLS Cup and you make your first World Cup team. I mean, what's that, <laughs> your, your life work kind of comes down to five days. What, <laughs> what, what kind of is that like? And then to go back in time, you were on the field in Tr Trinidad when you didn't make it. Um, and could you talk just a minute about most people don't get two bites at the apple and you did. You you missed it and you got a chance to come back again. What are your feelings about that? Thank you. And congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just been um, a whirlwind. I mean, something, you know, like I said, 10 years of trying to get to this point. And um, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of the game. I mean, I've been putting a lot of hours to get to the point and um, to not only win an MLS Cup, but then also in the same week go to the World Cup. I mean, you would think <laughs> I'd be crazy if I said that, but it's a, it's a huge achievement for myself, for my family, um, for the club. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful and I, I'm going to wear the colors with a lot of responsibility. And, um, you know, as far as... Um, as um, you mentioned, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a difficult time, and um, and uh, I mean, that's just the beauty of the game. You know, sometimes when you you know you work hard at something, you get rewarded, and then you get another opportunity at it. And from my standpoint, it was just about you know buckling down and just being ready. And so whenever I was called upon, if I was called upon, I'd be ready to go and you know, help contribute. And um, you know, it's been a it's been a long four years to get to this point, but uh, I mean, I just feel so rewarding, and it's been it's been it's been amazing. All right, thank you. Let's go, uh, Michelle Kaufman. Go ahead, Michelle. Hey, um, hello from Miami. Uh, double congratulations for the MLS and uh, and this announcement today. I wanted to ask you about one of your teammates, DeAndre Yedlin. Um, I know what he what he has brought into Miami this year as far as just being an incredible locker room leader and what he does on the field. Uh, you know, can you just talk about your experience with him and what do you think a guy like him? He's the only player with World Cup experience on this squad. What do you think he brings? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, D, I've been knowing him since, you know, youth national team got, uh, days, the guys that I've really admired, his work ethic, um, you know, you mentioned about him and his locker room presence. I mean, he he's a leader of its own and he leads by example. And I feel like he's just such a personal person that he's able to, um, you know, blend in with different environments and bring out the fullest potential in everyone. And so that's a that's a testament to who he is. And then just not only um, how he is as a person, but he's I mean, he's a great player as well. Um, like you mentioned, he's the only guy that has played in, in a World Cup and and, um, you know, he's looking to play in another one. Uh, I hope he, you know, he's on the field for us. But um, he's a guy that's worked extremely hard to get to this point. And, um, you know, I think he's a testament to, to work ethic. And um, yeah, I think uh, I think it would be positive if, if guys can fall into his footsteps. I think he's super influential for our team. And I know in Miami, I think um, everyone can say the same way. Thank you. All right, thank you. Kevin, I see you've got your hands up. Do you have another question? Uh, no, maybe not. Okay, uh, Josh Gross, go ahead, Josh. 
Hey, thanks, Kellen. Congratulations on uh, the announcement. Um, where do you see yourself in terms of team leadership? Obviously, a bunch of great guys that you know very well. How, how do you think you fit in in terms of the hierarchy of, of where other players will look at for motivation, uh, things like that? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think of it as a hierarchy. I think of it as a collective effort. I think we're all leaders in our own sense. Um, some people lead in different ways. I think for, from my standpoint, um, whether I'm on the field or off the field, it's about just being vocal, um, sharing my experiences, uplifting words, and, you know, get people going with energy and, 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 and all of it. So, I mean, I think for all of our standpoints, we need, um, you know, 26 leaders out there for us to have a successful campaign in this World Cup. So I think from my standpoint, it's about, you know, bringing my experiences and just helping those around me. All right, thank you. We've got, um, oh, I see, Let's see. Uh, Jacob, go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Kellen, it's uh, Jacob Toby from Nine News in Denver. Um, can you just describe the feelings that you're you know, feeling right now, um, thinking back to playing for the Rapids and kind of growing with the national team, starting there and then um, now you're here. And then second, um, just kind of talk about uh, your teammate, Ethan, obviously, he's from Colorado as well and you know him a little bit so I uh, kind of just talk about his uh you know his his status on the team and how proud are you of him yeah I mean I think as, as career goes I mean you you have highs and you have lows and right now I'm you know I'm riding on a, a huge high coming off of MLS Cup um finding out I'm making the World Cup roster I mean it's been it's been a tremendous week but I think it's just a, a testament of just my you know my whole career is, you know, um, you know, I've battled adversity um, throughout my whole career. It's about attacking it and facing it and conquering it. And I've, I've done just that. So it's just definitely been huge. Um, and, um, you know, it's been, a, like I mentioned, just a whirlwind, but I'm just super excited, super happy, super grateful to be ch achieving a, my childhood dream. And um, as far as Ethan goes, I mean, Ethan's a guy that I've probably known, one, I mean, one of the guys I've known the longest um, on the team. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a testament to him as well. Um, I'm super proud of him for starters for um, making the squad. I mean, he's had his own journey. Um, I think he's done a, a great job at, at Luton right now, and he's been playing his trade, you know, um, week in and week out. And um, and uh, we've shown, he's shown in the past that you know when counted upon, he he's ready. And uh, I mean, I see a guy that's constantly just working hard. And so when when his number's called, he, he's going out there and he helps contribute to the team. So that's that's just how Ethan is. And like I mentioned, I'm super proud of him. But um, I think it's just for it's more of he's rewarding himself for all the hard work he's put into it. All right. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Andrea. Andrea, go ahead. Hi, Kelly. It's Andrea Yanis for the Puerto Total USA. I wanted to ask you, how do you think the World Cup would change your career? Do you think you're going to see a difference after playing the World Cup? Are you excited about that? And how do you think it's going to change your career, not only in the football side of things, but personally for you? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. I mean, this is something that every footballer dreams of. I mean, the World Cup is the, the biggest tournament at the biggest stage, and that can really change my life. You know, one one good game, a goal, a moment, I mean, it can really change the landscape of of your whole career. And it, it, like I said, I mean, it's it's a, it's a dream come true to be able to have the opportunity to, to represent, represent the, my country in, in the World Cup. And um yeah, and just outside of football, I mean, it, I think it opens doors for other opportunities as well. And so, I mean, it's something I will never take for granted. And it's uh, it's a huge opportunity for myself. And I'm, you know, I'm super excited to just go out there and help contribute to my team. And and hopefully we have a, a good campaign at the World Cup. All right, thanks. We've got one more question. Uh, Jeff Ruder, go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Kellen, Jeff Ruder with The Athletic. Congratulations on the roster. Quite a week for you. Um, when we've talked in the past, we had discussed how you and have been wanting to move to Europe in your career, especially as you were with Dallas and Colorado and, and, and moves that almost came together and how you saw that as important to establish yourself in the U.S. men's national team pool. Is there something that's validating about the work that you've done to make the roster, given the fact that European move didn't come together? Right. I mean, I think it's about making the most of where you are. Um, it's about being present. And I mean, I've always been um, 
um, I guess I've always spoke about that, that I want to be in Europe and play in Europe. And that's always been a dream of mine, something I've always wanted to achieve. And I, I still have sights on that. I mean, I think I've had a different uh different avenue um in my career but um i think i'm I'm in the perfect place at the perfect time and um i think from my standpoint it's about working hard each and every day and um you know giving myself an opportunity to um, um have the opportunity to play for the national team and so um it's definitely been positive and i mean i'm super grateful for the opportunity and um you know i just can't wait for it congratulations thank you appreciate it yes for the second time now um I just wanted to know how is it different this time from the last time, if you remember that day of making the team as a youngster um, back before 2014, how is it different this time? And how were your, how will your role be different coming in this time? How do you view yourself? You are the only player with world cup experience on this team. So I'm assuming that you're going to be called on to lead. Uh, so just kind of compare the two experiences. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I think this time it's just harder to leave because of Seneca. <laughs> um, you know, it's pretty hard leaving her and this will be the longest I will have been away from her. Um, so that part of it was pretty difficult. Um, but obviously, you know, having made a second World Cup uh, is an incredible honor. Um, you know, and like you said, um, you know, being a leader on this team, um, you know, it's incredibly important to the team. Uh, it's important for me. Um, uh, you know, and for me, I'm just going to try to do everything that I can for the team, whether that's on the field, whether that's on the bench or whether that's in the stands, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just try to lead in, in every way that I can. And, you know, obviously I've told all the guys, if they have questions or advice that they need, it can always come to me. Um, and yeah, just be a, just try to be the best leader that I can. Thank you. We will go to Jose Rodriguez, then Jeff, go ahead. Thanks, Rafa. Uh, congratulations, DeAndre. I, I want to ask you about that first first game in the World Cup uh, this year. Obviously, very important. If we, if we take a look at the landscape of the group, we know that's a big matchup. Um, what are your thoughts on that game? And, and what's the approach that you guys have to take in the next few days to just be ready for that moment? Yeah, um, you know, in this, in this fitness camp that we just had with the MLS players, we've been doing a lot of work on, you know, playing against a system that, you know, we think that they could possibly play and, you know, trying different formations. Um, so we've been preparing already. Um, obviously, we'll add the European-based guys into that sort of training. Um, but it's a difficult game, and it's the World Cup, so every game is difficult. And sometimes, you know, there's stuff that you don't think will happen, happens, and you just have to adapt. That's part of being a professional. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're doing the best we can to prepare, uh, whether it be tactical, fitness, whatever it may be. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's the World Cup, and sometimes things happen that you have to adapt to. So, um, you know, we need to prepare for that as well. We'll go to Jeff, then to Josh Moser. Hey, DeAndre, congratulations. Glad I'm not the yeah. only one who threw a cap on backwards for this evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just wanted to kind of touch back about the, the leadership and being the only returning member of a World Cup roster. I mean, you're pretty young to be the vet, right? I mean, just mm -hmm. given where you are in your career, are there any lessons that you remember from guys like Wondolowski, Beckerman, Davis, whatever from the previous roster that, that give you a sense of what you need to be at or where your head needs to be at to get the best out of such a young team? Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, I learned a lot from myself. Um, you know, after reflecting about the last World Cup, I think, you know, one of the greatest things I learned was you know, the best thing you can do is to stay present. If you keep thinking ahead, whether that be in, whether that be the next game or whether that be the next round, whatever it may be, you're going to lose track and probably not perform to the top of your ability. If you can stay present and stay in the moment, that's the most important, that's the most important moment there is. Um, so that's kind of the message that I've, that I've tried to preach to, to the guys. Um, it's also, you know, away from a performance basis, an experience that not many people get to experience. And it's an experience that, you know, may happen only once in your lifetime. So that's a whole nother reason to try to stay present and just be aware of, you know, everything that's going on. We'll go to Josh and then Kevin Baxter. Hey, DeAndre, congratulations, man. Huge honor. Uh, no you. surprise. We're here in Miami. So we watch you all season on inner. Just a couple questions. What's different about the World Cup just for someone that hasn't watched it? And then how do you feel about the roster and your chances as a team to get out of the group stage? 
Yeah, I mean, I feel, you know, the World Cup is obviously the biggest sporting event in the world. So there's that that feeling, that hype around it. You know, it's kind of hard to explain, but, you know, for somebody who's watching the World Cup for the first time, I think you'll you'll really experience that. Um, you know, there's obviously the pride in, you know, the countries um, and representing your country. So that whole aspect gets thrown into it. And, you know, it's, um, you know, the best players in the world. You're playing against the best players in the world. So, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that get thrown around that, uh, that are thrown into it that make it just such an amazing event. And then, you know, as far as group stage uh, stuff goes, all we're trying to, we are looking at it in two different steps. We're obviously taking, you know, the group phase and then the second obviously step would be, you know, after that. And then we just take it from there. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to take it game by game. Um, you know, that's the approach that we took during all of qualifiers, besides probably the first, uh, the first little round of qualifiers where we got, where we got uh, punished a little bit. Um, but then from really then on, it was just game by game and that, and that worked for us. So that's what we're going to try to do here. We're not thinking ahead to anything else really, but, uh, but Wales. And, um, you know, that's, that's the, that's the main, the main point right now. Cool. Congrats. Just a quick follow up. Are the nerves different when you step on, you know, the world cup pitch? I know you've been there before you've played on the mm -hmm. biggest stage, but yeah. as a player, what's different? Yeah, I think it's different for everybody. Um, you know, everybody has different reactions to it. Um, you know, for me, I can't say how it could be this time because I honestly don't know. Um, the last time for me, um, you know, it was kind of, I don't really know. I was just kind of, I was so present and in the moment that I wasn't really even aware of what I was doing, as strange as that sounds. Um, you know, everything was just kind of happening. I was in a flow state. So, um, you know, that's what I felt, but it can be different for other players. Some players can have nerves. Some players can be completely relaxed. It all just comes down to the person. We'll go to Kevin Baxter, then Nancy Armore. Hey, DeAndre, congratulations. Uh, I want to Thank take you, you back a little bit. You you were there, obviously, in Brazil, as everyone's talked about, but, but then you were also there in Trinidad, right? You were there uh, in, in the loss. Did you think that... Uh, what, what did that feel like, first of all? Because you had been to a World Cup and everyone just assumed the U.S. is going to go every four years. You found out that you weren't going to go. What was that disappointment like? And did you think you were going to get back? And does it make it sweeter that you did get back after that disappointment? Or maybe the first time in Brazil, you didn't even know what you were, you know, what it was supposed to feel like. Right. Yeah, no, it was obviously extremely disappointing. Um, you know, I think, you know, to your point, I think, you know, obviously the fans expected it, but even we expected it. And that's why we got in the situation that we got it into or that we got into. Um, you know, sometimes you, you have to really respect every opponent. And on that day, I think, you know, we didn't give them enough respect and uh, ended up getting uh, punished for it. But on the same token, I think, you know, to every negative, there's a positive. And I think that kind of lit, you know, the fuel to the fire, you know, that kind of built this team um, and built this young group and kind of, you know, rebranded the Federation a little bit. Um, and now I think, you know, everybody in the country and, and the players as well are really happy about the group that we have and, you know, think we have a, a great chance of being very successful. Thanks a lot, good luck. Thank you. We will go to Nancy Armour, then Larry Henger. Henry. Hey, DeAndre, congratulations and, yeah, and thanks thank for doing you. this. Um, yeah. Having been a, a new player, and having watched this group of young players the last couple of years, mm -hmm. what what have you seen from them that makes you think that that this stage won't be too big for them? I mean, we've heard about the fact that guys have played in Champions League, they play in Europe, et cetera, et cetera. But right. what have you seen specifically from this group that makes you think they'll be able to adapt to adapt without a big learning curve? Right. Um, I mean, you got you see guys stepping up in huge moments. Um, you know throughout, you know, these last four years, whether it be, you know, Christian, you know, scoring a penalty against Mexico or um, Tyler, you know, having a man of the match game against Liverpool. Um, you know, there's there's so many instances, Serginho, you know, playing at Barcelona, AC Milan, um, you know, there's so, there's so many, you know, instances where guys have stepped up in really big moments. Um, and, you know, I don't think anybody can, know what kind of moment this will be like till they're in it so again it's i don't think anybody will know exactly how you know players will react but at the end of the day these guys should be confident in knowing that they've been in huge moments before and they've stepped up to the plate in huge moments so at, i think that you know they'll be fine in in doing it in this moment we'll go to larry now then mauricio venegas 
uh, DeAndre, uh, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Wow, thank you. Um, just wanted to ask about, obviously, you being a veteran of the bunch, you've worked with a lot of these other fullbacks in these camps. Uh, what what has impressed you about these, these other guys, Anthony Robinson, Joe Scally, um, younger guys that are playing big roles for their clubs in big leagues, and then mm -hmm. Shaq Moore, who is obviously, um, you know, came come to MLS and, and fit right into the Nashville team. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, I mean, to be honest, like all the fullbacks that we have are just machines and like to, to play in this in this system that Greg wants, you have to be a machine. So, um, you know, that's credit to everybody that's here. Um, you know, we got guys that are obviously very athletic, um, technically good on the ball, can get up and down, um, good 1v1 defenders. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, the fullback pool is very strong. Um, you know, there's obviously guys that missed out that are also incredibly good players and it easily could have gone to one of, to one of those guys making, making the group. So, um, you know, it's a good sign for the future of U.S. soccer because, you know, by myself, <laughs> a lot of these guys are still pretty young. So, you know, they have, you know, a huge future, um, you know, down the line of U.S. soccer. We'll go to Mauricio Venegas, then Mike. Hi, DeAndre. Apologies for the background noise, but congratulations on your call up and being the first uh, club player in Inter Miami history to be called up for the World Cup. Well, it's really good for coming to the club. So I wanted to ask you, uh, what's your message for the fans and um, how has your year playing for the club helped you to be ready for this, uh, for this challenge at the World Cup? Yeah, I'll say my message to the fans is obviously I appreciate the support um, always. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, they're, they're supporting uh us in the world cup but i obviously realize that some people have other teams that they support so i just hope they have a great experience watching the world cup and um that i'll see them soon and with uh playing this year for inner miami i've i've really had to grow into a into that leadership role and that's helped me with you know with the national team um you know having to be a leader um you know there's correlations between the two so um you know this year has been huge for me obviously i've gotten consistent playing time um, which has really helped my fitness levels, um, you know, confidence, everything like that. Uh, it's been great. And obviously it's a great group to be around. So my spirit's been high and very positive. And um, yeah, hopefully that leads me or leads me um, in well to the World Cup. And we'll do the last two questions, Mike and then Andrea. Uh, DeAndre, just a question about something uh, Berhalter mentioned on the broadcast. He said that uh, you know, with the issues in Qatar, obviously you guys are there to, you know, play in a World Cup, but he and you and the rest of the player pool are not, you know, ignoring some of the issues that are going on there. Have you guys had discussions or made plans about anything in particular you're going to do in that regard with that part of the tournament? Um, I mean, we've been we've been educated on the issues going on over the last year and a half, uh, per se. Um, so we're definitely aware of the issues. Obviously, we're taking on the approach of, of be the change. And, you know, that basically entails that, um, you know, we all can can be the change that we want to see. Um, I know the Federation has uh, for all the fan events, they've set up uh, safe spaces for for everybody, um, you know, no matter what. So, you know, that's a step that they're taking. Um, you know, I'm, I know there's other things going on that the Federation is playing and I'm sure we'll be. Uh, you know, made aware of those when we get there. Um, so, yeah. And last question, Andrea. Hi, DeAndre, congrats. I have two qu Thank quick you. questions for you. The first one is, are you excited for that England matchup? You spend a lot of years over there. Yeah. I guess you have received a lot of messages from your friends over there. Yeah. And the second one is, what does it mean for you as a girl dad to be playing your first World Cup as a girl dad and in your fatherhood? Yeah, no, I'm very excited to play England. I got a lot of a lot of friends on that team, um, guys that I played against, guys that I played with. So it'd be great to see them again. It's always a good competition, and they're and they're obviously a great team. So you know, um, you always want to play play some of the best, and and they're definitely they're definitely one of the best uh, in this tournament. Um, and you know, being a girl dad um, is is incredible. First of all, um, you know, forget the soccer part of it. Just being a girl dad is incredible. Um, you know, I, it's, it's hard to, it's hard, you know, before being a dad realized how much you can love something. And, you know, now it's, 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 a uh, it's unfathomable. So that's great. And then obviously, um, you know, playing in my first world cup as a girl, dad is, 
is is great it's an honor hopefully uh she's not going to Qatar but uh, I'm sure she'll be watching at home with her grandmother so um you know if I if I get time on the field I'll definitely be playing for her